All right. Good evening, everybody. I hope everybody's doing well today. Uh, my phone number. <laughs> my name is. I can tell I made a few phone calls today. My name is Jeff Gibby. I'm going to be uh, kicking you off today, reading a legal disclaimer and telling you a little bit about Jeff. Um, anyway, uh, welcome. Appreciate you guys coming. I uh, hope it's uh, worthwhile for you. I think it will be. And um, I really like Jeff's uh, opening range stuff. He's got some really cool stuff. We were working on it for quite a few months. I think it's since March or something uh, in terms of getting it per perfect for meta stock. And so it's a, it's a project we've been working on for a while. Anyway, let me go ahead and get started. If you haven't been uh, to a meta stock webinar before, you're in for a real treat with this next slide. Today's demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and the accompanying software plugins, and it's not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using specific indicators and features within the software. The information, software, and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of the software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. It's always fun. A little bit of a tongue twister there uh, in certain parts. Um, Jeff, Jeff, how do I kind of start to talk to you about Jeff? Jeff is somebody that I've been familiar with for quite a while. Um, I, like I said, I really like kind of the studies that he's developed into Metastock and that I've helped him work on for Metastock. Uh, very interesting ways of looking at kind of the opening just you know first few minutes of the bars and kind of being able to see what the market's going to do and he's developed some pretty cool stuff around that, that i think will appeal to uh, a lot of our a lot of our during the day traders or real-time traders so i of course we got everything put together uh we brought jeff in and we want to show it and kind of show it off so jeff are you uh, are you with us today right now I am. I am with us. Great. Can you hear me? Yes. Did you get your water? Uh, well, I didn't get as much as I wanted, but I'm sure I'll uh, I'll make it if I start okay. if I start uh, sounding awfully scratched in the middle of the presentation. Uh, you'll know why. Perfect. I'm not worried. Okay. Good. Good. Well, uh, welcome. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll just let you start talking. Okay, hold on one one second. I just I I thought there might be an echo because of the way the sound is coming out of my speakers, and I didn't hear what you just said. So, okay. am I ready to get going? Yeah, yeah. There there is sometimes a little bit of an echo when two microphones are live at the same time. So as soon as I shut it off, it'll probably go away. Um. Yeah. Yes. I'm just gonna get out of the way and let you talk. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, thank you for that introduction, Jeff. And um, Jeff is is right when he says we've spent some time putting together some indicators uh, and some work for you as Metastock um, users. And so I'm I'm excited as well to show you the new functionality uh, that you'll have in the Metastock platform, as well as to be able to show you, and probably more importantly how you can actually make some money using it. All right, so I came back to the title slide here, Profitable swing, profitable uh, Trading Tactics for Day and Swing Trading, because I just want to get uh, the stage set here for both the day trader and the swing trader. The, the purpose of my presentation here tonight is to really show you how you can identify the direction of the market intraday with some pretty uh, incredible precision. And from my point of view, that makes it a very valuable, um, valuable resource, valuable skill for both the day trader, where it's essential, and the swing trader who wants to get the best entries and exits that he or she can get. So how many of you are familiar with market gauge? Uh, if you could just say heard of it, haven't heard of it, um, that would give me a sense of uh, the crowd here. And uh, Henry from Sweden, hey, how are you? All right, so I've got uh, some no's, some yeses. Okay. All right, so... 
another quick question. How many of you are day traders, swing traders, or both? And as I've just said, it's going to apply to both, um, but I will uh, try to adapt if it's lopsided. It's about it's about half and half with um, uh, many of you doing both. Okay, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about market gauge, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time uh, on market gauge. But Market Gauge uh, was founded by myself and Keith Schneider in 1996, so we've been doing this for a long time. And our objective with Market Gauge is uh, really to provide you, being the individual traders, with the best value in, in terms of both training and um, services that enable you to become a self-empowered trader, whether that's day trading or swing trading. Uh, we want to give you both the tools that you need and the education that will help you get there. But we have a very specific set of tools. We don't think that um, we're a one-stop shop. We're very much a value add. So this is me, Jeff Bish. And as I uh, said, we started Market Gauge in uh, 96, but I started trading in 1990. And I started tr uh, trading on the floor of the New York Commodities Exchange. And after the floor, I went and worked with a hedge fund called Millennium Partners, uh, which is now a multi-billion dollar hedge fund out of New York. And we focused on Keith and I, my co-founder, we're both working there at the same time, uh, focused on equity trading using computers and neural networks to identify trading setups. So. Uh, former floor trader, that was my hedge fund experience, was at Millennium. And then I co-founded DataView and MarketGauge.com. And so as a result, I've uh, been part of, big part of pretty much all the products that have come out of MarketGauge, including uh, hot scans, which some of you may know. Uh, I also uh, put out a book called uh, Trading the 10 O'Clock Bulls. And I'm going to actually give you an address where you can get um, a somewhat of a version of that, a part one version of it, uh, tonight for free. So, you're here because you want to be a better trader, is my, is my guess. I'm certainly going to take that premise because I want to help you get there. I also want to start from a, a very simple place, and that is that successful traders that I've known over the, the decades have um, a few things in common. And one of those uh, commonalities is that they have a simple and effective method for determining when to be long or short. And I want to focus on simple and effective. Okay, So in this webinar, I'm going to show you how to use the OR, or that's short for the opening range, to trade more profitably and more confidently. And I'm going to use the OR because it's simple and it's effective. To do this, I'm going to review two strategies. And the two strategies are, again, intended to make you a trader who can deal with all different types of market conditions. And the way you'll do that is you'll understand how to use the opening range to trade reversals and trade momentum. And when I say reversals, I mean we're looking to be a buyer near the low of a move and a seller near the high of the move. When I say momentum, I mean breakouts. I mean you want to be a buyer as the market is uh, accelerating higher and you want to be a seller as the market is accelerating lower. And as I just said, um, part of uh, attending this webinar will enable you to get a, uh, a free ebook, the Opening Range Handbook, and indicators for your Metastock charts. So you're going to see Metastock charts in this presentation, and you're going to see the Opening Range indicators. And you can get those uh, for free if you go to marketgauge.com forward slash Metastock. 
Now, I know this violates all marketing rules to tell you to go get something free, right, as I'm starting a presentation. So I'm going to ask you. It'll be there later. I'm not taking it down. Um, you can go there quickly, save the URL, uh, and it'll be easy to, to download the book. And you'll see the indicators there uh, to download as well. So let's focus on simple and effective. <clears throat> I'm going to start with the effective. All right. The opening range has I'm going to I'm going to talk about two different time frames for the opening range. But the most important one to learn to get started is the 30 minute opening range. And the 30 minute opening range means it's the first 30 minutes of the trading day. Now that represents 8% of the trading day in terms of time. However, the high or the low of the day occurs 50% of the time in that first 30 minutes. Now this understanding this and understanding how to use this information gives you a huge statistical edge. Think about it. You know in the first 8% of the day that the high or the low of the day has likely already been put in. Now if I told you what the higher the low of the day was likely to be, I would think you'd have one of a couple reactions. One, well if I know what the low of the day is going to be, then when I get near the low, I want to be a buyer. Right? Because I can use the low as my stop. I know it's not always going to be the low of the day, but if it's a high percentage of the time and I use a tight stop and all I have to do is have the market go back up to the high of the day, then I can set up a system whereby my risk is much less than my reward and I have the percentages in my favor. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. Now the flip side of that is that if you have a price level that is normally the high or the low of the day, but let's say that's normally the high of the day, and you take that out, it suggests that the market is doing something unusual today. And that lends itself to knowing which days are likely to trend. The days when the opening range gets taken out. Now you may hear some beeps in the background and that means that I just lost power. Um, it's not it, typically if this happens it will come back on in the next few minutes. If it doesn't come back on and you lose me it's because you've I've lost power. So I'm gonna keep going and assume that the power is gonna become um, come back on. Pedal faster. Very funny. All right. So if we look at the opening range high and the opening range low in terms of 8% of the day, but break it down into more detail, and I went back and look at over the last four years, the opening range high equals the high of the day 23% of the time. The low equals the low of the day 27% of the time. Either comes in at 50% of the time. So when I say after the first 30 minutes, you know that either the high or the low is likely to be the high or the low of the day 50% of the time. That's where that comes in. So these are the stats we use to gain a statistical edge by trading around these key price points. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so the last the last slide here that I was uh, focusing on got a little uh, interrupted from the uh, beeps and noises and disruptions. So let me start uh, from this the beginning of this slide again. Let's take a look at the opening range statistics a little more closely because I'm going to come back to these later in the presentation and also because I think it's important that we understand why the opening range is so effective, that you do have the math on your side. 
So I've already told you that the, um, the opening range, either the high or the low, is the high or the low of the day 50% of the time, which you see here. But if we break that down, let me try and use the, the, the pointer here. If we break that down, it breaks down like this. The opening range high is the high of the day 23% of the time, and the opening range low is the low of the day 27% of the time. Now, I didn't just take those two, add them together, and get 50. I did the math properly and said, what is the what are the odds that either one will be the high or the low uh, of the day? And again, we're talking about the first 30 minutes of the day, which represents 8% of the day, and yet 50% of the time, the higher the low will be put in during that period. So the significance of this is that you can trade against those levels with the expectation that those levels are going to hold. And when those levels don't hold, it means the market's doing something unusual. And as we'll see later in the presentation, these statistics can get even better. And what I mean by that is we can make them even stronger. We can know with even more certainty whether or not the high is likely to be the higher of the day or the low is likely to be the low of the day by adding a few things to our um, equation, so to speak. But before I do that, let's just make sure, I want to make sure that you understand what I mean when I say the opening range. So the opening range is the first 30 minutes of the day which means that if we're looking at, in this case, we're looking at a five-minute chart. If we look at the market action from the open of 9.30 to 10 o'clock, that represents the first 30 minutes. And I want to know what the absolute high and the absolute low is for that period. And then I simply draw the line like we've got it here, a little messy. That's going to represent my open opening range high and I draw the line at the lowest period and that's my opening range low. And if you just do this, just to kind of test my sanity here, you will see that this level is a very significant level very often during the day. And this particular chart happens to be a really good example of it. We, we establish the high here and then it took some work to get through it here. It finally gets through it here, and then it holds that level once it's broken. It acts like really significant support and resistance. Now, the value of this is that you know this, this time frame is going to exist even before the day begins. So here's an example of the opposite which is a breakdown below the 30-minute opening range low. All right, so the range gets established by the first couple bars. Then, <clears throat> sorry, the range gets established at the end of the period. And you can see that it bounces off that level, rallies back up, can't get through. So it acts as resistance just as we'd expect it to. Then once it gets through the resistance, through the support, then it's a trend day to the downside. Now, does this mean that every time we break the opening range one direction or the other, it's definitely going to trend that day? No, it doesn't. But again, I'll show you ways to help figure out which days are likely to be the trend days and which days are likely to be the chop days. But it's as simple as that. So if anybody uh, doesn't uh, quite comprehend how we figure out what the opening range is, feel free to ask. Now, I am going to focus on the 30-minute opening range because I said that's the best opening range to start with. It's the best opening range to start with because you have more time to be able to sit back, uh, uh, digest what those levels are, and then react to it as the market unfolds. But an equally powerful opening range is the first five minutes of the day. And so again, we're looking at a five-minute chart, and it is exactly what it sounds like. 
the five minute opening range is determined by the five minute high and the five minute low. We'll look at them for different strategies, but those are the two primary opening ranges that I'll look at. And once again, take a look. Here's the 30 minute opening ranges in the dotted line up here. And um, you can see, oh, I guess this is the same chart though. So the 30 minute opening range happens after the first 30 minutes. The five minute happens after the first five minutes. It really is that straightforward to get started. Remember, I said in the beginning of this, I wanted something to be simple and effective. So the five minute and the 30 minute are not always the same numbers. They were in my last example, but here's an example where you've got the five minute opening range in the solid lines and the 30 minute opening range in the dotted lines. All right, just a little, um, a little tidbit. The five minute is often a significant level, even if it is within the 30 minute. All right, so you can see here, the market establishes a 30 minute opening range and when it rallied back up, it's really held back by the five minute uh, level. All right, so the best situation is if you can look at both. If you're only gonna look at one, I recommend looking at the 30 to get started. And if you wanna act quickly, then you're going to want to look at the five, and we'll talk about that strategically coming up. So, how do you use it to determine the trend of the day? Well, I already started you down that path, which is if you take out the high of the 30-minute opening range and you take it out significantly, then the likelihood is that the market has an upwardly bullish bias that day. Right? That means that your, uh, your bulls are in control. On the other hand, if the market trades below the opening range, then the bears are in control. So when does it really shift? Right? If you're above the opening range and then you come back into the opening range, ha range has it shifted yet? The answer is not really. It's going to depend on the bigger picture, but... I would consider in the opening range neutral territory, and it's still neutral to bullish if you've had a significant opening range breakout. All right. So the shift really occurs when you move above or below that range. Now, the best way to use the opening range, the is to understand when you want to focus on the opening range high and when you want to focus on the opening range low and when you want to focus on a 30 minute opening range versus when you want to focus on a five minute opening range and that's what i mean by the right strategy at the right time now it doesn't have to be complicated however i just don't want you to walk away from this presentation thinking okay i get it all i have to do is buy it as soon as it gets over the 30 minute opening range and I'm fine or sell it when it gets below the 30 minute op opening range low and I'm fine okay you can be much more successful if you knew a f know a few more things so we're going to focus on two patterns the reversal and you're going to use the reversal to um, either trade ranges or trade uh, pullbacks and we're going to focus on the breakout. And so the breakout is to catch breakouts, to catch momentum when a stock's beginning to uh, take off. As I said earlier, you can use these two strategies both for day trading and for swing trading. I use the 30-minute opening range as my entries and my exits for my swing trades. So what does that mean? That means if I'm in a swing trade and I'm trying to let that swing trade go as long as I can to work with me, then even if it opens against me, I'm going to wait for the first 30 minutes if I can and let that first 30 minute opening range tell me whether or not this is really a day that's going to go against me or maybe that open was just a head fake and it turns around and goes right back in the opposite direction. 
And I can't tell you how many times waiting for that 30-minute opening range has saved me from getting stopped out of stocks at the wrong time on my swing trades. From a day trading perspective, I think it's pretty obvious um, how, he, how we get to use them. So let's look at the opening range reversal first. Now, the first thing about the opening range reversal is that we only do reversals on 30-minute opening ranges. So the idea of, a, of the opening range reversal is that preferably the stock has moved in, a, in, in one direction and you're looking to take advantage of going in the opposite direction. Now, the way we look at the uh, opening range reversal is we like to see the opening range get tested and really broken. It doesn't have to be broken by much, just so that you can get that breakout failure feeling. All right. I mean, how many of you have bought breakouts only to have them fail on you? You wind up getting stopped out, right? Well, this is a strategy that actually looks for that to happen, measures that it's happening, and takes advantage of it. Now, you also like to do this when you've got a wider opening range because what you want is the target to be down at the other end of the day. So you can make money even if all the stock does is go back to the other side of its daily range. So you want, we have a, a specific pattern on a one minute chart that we look for to be extra sensitive. I'm not going to go into the uh, literally that, that specific pattern right now, but there are many different reversal patterns you could look for at this level and it would get you going in the right direction. All right, for right now, what I want you to look for is I want you to anticipate that the 30 minute opening range high in this case is going to be a significant level and if it's broken and then comes back into it the process of it coming back into it taking out pretty much any level of support is your indication that it's time to get in and you're going to set a stop at a new high of the day and I'll talk about it, the, the levels we use to determine those stops coming up and the other thing you want to do is find situations where the other side of the range has a good risk reward ratio relative to your stop okay so this offers you a way to have a stock that you're bearish on and look to sell it in a very uh, mechanical way on strength and and the opposite for buying dips so we were just looking at Cirrus logic. And one of the things that we, uh, we do, and it's in incredibly important to bring your statistical edge up, is we look for patterns or the trend on the daily chart, and we trade along with that trend. So I have the daily chart here, and you can see why I would want to be short Cirrus logic, or at least look for a short, when you know that this blue line is the 50-day moving average and this gray line is the 200-day moving average. And then remember, this is a daily chart. There's all kinds of resistance up here. So when Cirrus logic was getting up against this re resistance and the opening range lined up with that resistance, it made for a really good location on the daily chart to get short. So when I say that I want to play a stock with either a reversal or a breakout pattern, most of the time that's actually determined by the daily chart. I've got a daily chart that looks like I want to get short. That means I'll look for an opening range reversal on the short side or I'll look for a breakdown on the short side. I won't look for a reversal on the long side or a breakout on the long side. And if you, if you use it that way, it's much more effective. It's much easier. All right, so the second strategy is we're going to take a look at the five-minute breakouts. All right, now the reason I'm looking at a five-minute breakout is because it enables you <clears throat> to get into the market really quickly. Some of the ways that you'll use this is to fade gaps 
All right, so gaps down, you want to get in. Keep in mind, if we're fading a gap down, it has to have two, one of two characteristics. One, it's either a really exhaustive gap, or two, it's a gap that is a, a relatively small gap into support coming against the direction of the primary trend. So if you've got a really strong market and the, and the stock gaps down, still above support levels, then you want to get in quickly, and the way you do that is with a five-minute opening range. All right, that's what I mean when I say you only do this when the conditions are right. All right, the other situation is when you want to get into the stock quickly. In other words, you've got a daily pattern that indicates that the stock could have a quick move right off the open. So here's an example. You've got Amazon here. Remember, the, the blue moving average here is the 50. The gray moving average is the 200. It's sitting right at a key support level. And I don't want to go into too much detail about overanalysis of the chart, but let's suffice it to say it's at support, and it's got a pattern that we like which is an inside day. All right, so the inside day means it's wound up and it's sitting on multiple levels of support. And it's Amazon. So if this thing gets going in a direction, it's always nice to be able to get in early because if you're in early, you can use the opposite end of the range to uh, get in, uh, to, you, to uh, set your stop. So here's your inside day action. Again, we're on the five minute chart this time. Here's your five minute opening range high, five minute opening range low, and which I haven't talked about it yet, but you've got significant volume coming in right on those first two bars. So if I take out that five minute opening range high, I can set my stop below the low, and I've got a really tight stop for Amazon. If you look up here, I've got ATR on my chart. This is one of the indicators that you'll get if you download the package I talked about earlier. So I can see that the ATR, the average true range, or for right now, let's just call it the average range of Amazon is $8. I can see that the width of my opening range at this point goes from just over 262 to just over to 60 so let's call it less than three dollars so if I'm a buyer above the opening range with a stop below the low of the day I'm risking less than a third of the average range for the day if I can do that that's a good measure of risk for for me for a day trade and that's why I'd use the five minute opening range because look at what happens by the time you have the 30 minute opening range. Now my range is from 267 down to 260 and change. It's almost an entire ATR, an entire average range. Now I'll get into the buy and sell rules a little bit later, but if I was a buyer in here, my automated target is going to be about 266 and change. So I'd be selling before the opening range, the 30 minute opening range is even established. Now when I say automated, I use um, stops and targets based on the percentage of the average true range. And that enables me to quickly identify where my target is, where my exit is, without having to do a whole lot of work. And it also keeps my stops in line with my targets. It also enables me to very quickly identify whether or not there's a good trade here. So I'd look at this and say, yes, I've got a stop that is below the low of the day, and my target um, is going to be more than what my stop is, and I've got no resistance till I get there. Looks great. All right, I can do all that very quickly. So nothing against the 30-minute opening range, right? But there are times when the five-minute will work a lot better and it'll have you done for the day in uh, in your trading if you want to do it that way uh, before the first hour is done.
So let's look at another one. Now I've called this quick hit. So we don't necessarily um, categorize the trades that way, but that's the essence of the, the five minute setups that I'm showing. You've got good consolidation in here, and it just broke out <clears throat> above that level. So if the next day the, the market continues to move higher, it looks like it's set up for somewhat of an explosive move to the upside. Best time to get into an explosive move is early in the day. So that's where I'd look to do a five minute opening range breakout. Okay, so again, five first five minute bar right there. If we break out, I'm in and I catch that initial explosive move. Now keep in mind, the reason I'm using these examples is because the daily charts are so obviously um, bullish. If the daily charts are bearish, I'm not going to be looking at a five-minute opening range breakout. All right, this is key. It's very key. So the benefits of a breakout strategy, I think they're pretty obvious, but let's make sure that we're clear. You want to catch that momentum, all right? And you have a plan to catch that momentum, and that five-minute is the way you're going to implement that. Now, with the five-minute opening range, presumably, not always true, you're going to have lower risk because the range in the first five minutes is typically less than the range in the first 30 minutes. And you always want to try and find an opportunity to set your stop outside the range. All right, It's a much more robust stop. It doesn't mean it has to be that way, but it's better. It also enables you to catch the good gaps. All right, A good gap is one that doesn't stick around. It's open. So whether you're following the gap higher or you're fading the gap, or I should say following the gap in the direction of the gap or fading the gap, meaning going in the opposite direction of the gap, you want to get in quickly. You want to keep your risk tight. Use that five-minute opening range. It will save you save you a bundle on your stops as well all right i never ever exit a stock it within the first five minutes i know sometimes it can be painful i told you earlier i like to wait for 30 minutes but i definitely am not out in the first five minutes and that includes and especially includes those days if you're swing trading and you get absolutely clocked with a big gap down and i don't trade um over earnings dates. So I'm not talking about an earnings announcement. I'm just talking about pure surprise. Maybe it's a downgrade. Maybe it's um, economic news that uh, is unusual. Whatever it is, wait that at least that first five minutes because some of the worst gaps uh, that go against you uh, reverse in that first five minutes and um, it'll save you a ton of money. So just wait, use that five-minute opening range, and um, don't get caught by the overreaction move. And certainly, if you're a day trader, you come in flat, that's a great opportunity to actually take advantage of the overreaction move. And as I just said, some of the day's uh, biggest moves happen right in the morning, and they just never look back. So if you do this, you literally could have a two-hour trading day, right? And this is, this is how it would work. You look for the stocks that are really set up on the dailies, and you look for stocks that are prone to this five-minute opening range trade.
range and looks look where it held right at the five minute opening range all right so keep an eye on both of these levels especially when they are um, different okay and especially when they're both significant so the five minute and I wish I could get my eraser I knew I was going to do this Uh, all right. The point I think I think you can see the point, even though I've colored over the whole thing, and that is that oh, there we go. Once I break out of the thirty-minute opening range, I come back and I hold the five-minute opening range. But part of the reason that I would look for that to do that is because I had such good volume on that first five minutes. All right. Now here on a five-minute breakout. I would have been probably marginally out here. It's hard to tell. Even, even if I wasn't, right, my stop would be under the low of the day. And here's an opportunity where you've actually got an opening range reversal trade. When you take an opening range reversal trade, and I'll get into the, the, the rules of the stops, um, you're going to set your stop well below the low of the day. So if you're entering with that, and look look how it traded, takes out the op takes out the opening range low would have been a buyer in here. If you missed that, you have another pattern right here. Takes out the opening range low, comes back into it. Here's my target high of the day. All right, my stop would be down in here actually probably be down more like in here okay so that's how an opening range reversal works okay I started off by saying you want to make the um, you want to make or use the right strategy at the right time. Now, if I also started out by saying the opening range high is going to be the high of the day, I think I said 27% or 23% of the time, the opening range low is going to be the low of the day 27% um, of the time. But without getting into the numbers, when do you think you want to use an opening range breakout strategy versus an opening range reversal strategy or a long strategy versus a short strategy? You're going to want to use a long strategy when the opening range high is more likely to be broken. All right? Or when the opening range low is more likely to hold, right? So when you have a situation where the low of the day has a higher percentage chance of being the low, that's when you want to look for longs. You want to look for shorts when the low of the day has a lower percentage chance of being the low of the day, right? So the short trades, you're kind of looking for the weak lows. Long trades, you're looking for the weak highs. So here's how we determine when you have increased your odds of the opening range high or the opening range low being a strong high or a strong low. First of all, how many times have you seen a market trade over or under a point by just a little bit and then reverse? Okay, countless, I'm sure. So, if you want the opening range to be significantly more powerful, you want to apply a fudge factor. <clears throat> now, a fudge factor is simply saying that there's an area beyond that opening range, high or low, that you're willing to let the, the stock trade and still consider that higher low, the higher the low. 
So if you do that, you dramatically increase your odds, and I'll show you that in a second. The other thing you do is you trade with the trend. I'm sure this doesn't come as a surprise to many of you, but if you only focus on bullish strategies in a bullish trend, and that means that you're going to focus on buying against the opening range low, not selling the opening range low breakdown in bull trends, you'll increase your odds. In fact, we did the math. I'll show it to you. But first, I just described the, the fudge factor. We use the, that average true range to determine what an appropriate amount of the fudge factor should be. So remember, I was saying I know where my stops and my targets are going to be. I also know how far above the opening range the market has to trade in order for me to consider that opening range broken. So on a 30-minute opening range, I need the stock to trade 6% of its ATR over the OR high to be broken. So that means if the average range is a dollar, the stock's got to trade six cents over that opening range high in order for me to consider the opening range broken. Now, on a five-minute opening range, we use different values, and I'm not going to get into that um, right now. We also use time confirm. So it needs to not only trade above that level, but stay above that level. For a certain level number of minutes. But it's really breakouts you buy and which opening range breakouts you look to actually sell. The other thing that makes a huge difference is the trend. This isn't complicated. If you simply take the 10 day simple moving average and say, did I close above that moving average? If I did, I consider the short term trend up. If I didn't, I consider the short term trend down. Something as simple as that will tell you whether or not you should focus on buying the opening range low and buying through the opening range high or the opposite. In a bullish trend, you want to favor a strong opening range low and a weak opening range high. In other words, you're bullish. Now, if you put these two factors together, look at the difference that it makes in the reliability of the opening range high and low. And I promise you this is the end of the statistics part of this. So remember these two numbers from the beginning of the presentation? 23% of the time the opening range low is the, sorry, the opening range high is the high of the day. 27% of the time the opening range uh, low is the low of the day. Well, if I put a fudge factor on it and a trend, and then, so in other words, I say in order for me to consider the opening range high broken, I need to break 6% of the ATR, and I only look at that in situations where I have a, um, a bullish trend, that means That'll, um, that'll tell me that 26% of the time that high will be the, the high of the day. But 40% of the time, the low will be the low of the day. So in other words, with a bullish trend and fudge factor, I increase my strength of my low from 27% to 40%. Let me put this in layman's terms. If you had to buy against an opening range low, would you rather be the buyer when you know the stats are 27% of the time that low is going to hold, or would you want to be a buyer when 40% of the time it's going to hold? All right, I'd say that 40% of the time, naturally. All right, now, if the trend is down, do you want to be a seller against the opening range high when you know the opening range high is going to be the high of the day 37% of the time or 23% of the time? 
Well, you want to be a seller against that high at 37% of the time. All right. So if the trend is down, let's look at the breakouts. If the trend is down, then you know that the high of the opening range is going to be the high of the day 37% of the time. But if the trend is up, you know that the high of the opening range is going to be the high of the day 26% of the time. So I want to buy breakouts when I know that the high of the day is not going to be the, the level that I'm buying 26% of the time. So how does this all add up? If the trend is up and you use a fudge factor, you have much better odds of picking the breakouts and the reversals to trade. Now, you know, this is how it boils down in terms of uh, your rules. If I'm above the opening rate, if I'm above the 10 day moving average, I want to favor long trades. If I'm below, I want to favor short trades. That's what the stats suggest. If I use a fudge factor to, to truly determine that the breakout has happened, I'll increase the number of breakouts that work, decrease the ones that fail. Now, I have to save something for our members. I can't give it all away. But we also have one more condition that we layer into our rules that I'll call the special condition, which takes these numbers to 62%. So 62% of the time, I know that the opening range low is going to be the low of the day. And that compares to 27% here. And this number was 47% in the prior slide. So this is when I want to do my bullish opening range reversals. And you can see I've also actually reduced the percentage from normal that the opening range high will get taken out all right so when i said you could make those odds even better that's what i mean so if we put this all together you got a bullish or bearish bias and that's determined by your opening range right and then you're going to apply that understanding of your opening of the opening range to specific patterns on the daily chart. Remember, we don't just go and buy any breakout or sell any breakdown. Then we apply strict but easy and effective methods of risk management. I've basically told you the keys to our risk management lie in understanding the average true range. Not in understanding the math of the average true range, but setting your stops and targets based on the volatility of the stock. This will make it, it, this will make you more profitable if that's the only thing you change about your system. If you put those t t two, really three things together, the opening range, a specific daily pattern, and correct risk management, you will be so much further ahead in terms of having a systematic approach to trading that really reflects the personality of the stock that you're trading and it'll give you a lot more control and confidence in your trading so let's I'm gonna take a look at some trading examples and I can get into more of the kind of rules that um, that we employ now before I do does anybody have um, any questions so far? Because I'm going to kind of pull it all together here. Okay. All right. So I want you to just take a look at this chart and um, know that it's a five minute chart with the five minute, or sorry, 30 minute opening range high and low on it. And I want you to notice how as the market was coming down, it kept breaking the, breaking the 30 minute opening range and going lower, breaking the 30 minute opening range and going lower, breaking the opening range. There's somewhat of a shift, right? So now I would expect 
that an opening range breakout has a better chance of working. And in fact, it did. And in fact, in our trading room, we caught this day. And then the opening, the opening range turns out to be a great reversal trade. All right. Now, that's not uh, surprising because I can tell by this pattern that it's got the special condition that we look for that really increases the odds of your opening range low holding. So here's an opening range reversal trade that turns into a breakout trade that runs away. Then the following day, even if you're thinking, wow, this stock is really on fire now, all I have to do is be a buyer, it breaks the opening range and just continues to go lower. It never really sucks you in to become a buyer. And even though you might have come in with a bullish bias, if you sticked with the stuck with the discipline of letting the opening range guide you, you shouldn't have gotten hurt. This is what this looks like <clears throat> on a daily chart. So you can see this was the trend where it kept breaking down. This is the 50-day moving average, the blue line, so you're looking for support there. Now you've got an opening range, I think, that held, the opening range that held well, and then the big day. Now, if you look at this daily chart, is that that hard to figure out that this might be a good time to start looking for opening range um, breakouts, not to try and sell it? And more importantly, if you get an opening range breakout, you're really timing your way in really precisely. The next day, after this big up day, you've got the sell-off that is the opening range reversal. Okay, and then a rally. So my point here is that if you take a look, go back and look at the markets and see how they trade around these opening ranges. Look at how it lines up with the daily chart. Your eyes will be, will be wide open with amazement in terms of how logical the markets can be. Now, I'm not going to say that it's, you know, it becomes almost obvious. Now, I did this intentionally. I had you look at the action of intraday action with the help of seeing the opening range to illustrate how the market went from this mode of tending to go down relative to where it was opening to now shifting while not taking off quite yet, and then taking off. And so now, if you see that happening in the daily chart, you know to go the next day to the intraday chart with your opening range, fully prepared to know that that opening range high or low, depending on the way that you're going, is a key inflection point that you can take advantage of. So it, while I'm not going to say it's as simple as 1 plus 1, if you put these two pieces together, it's very straightforward. You want to keep it that simple. So in this case, I've got somewhat of a consolidation, actually nice consolidation, somewhat of a bullish price action on the daily uh, bar here. Nothing to jump up and down about, but it's consolidating at the 50-day moving average. You look into the market, you see that it's closed above the opening range uh, twice. Now you come in to before this day gets started. And you know that if you get an opening range breakout above this consolidation, that's what you're going to want to take. And you know that you have good risk in terms of being able to put your stop below the low of the day because you're getting in early. And as a result, you wind up catching the whole move. And the next day, on this explosive day, look, they don't always, act, they don't always work out this way, but if you waited for the opening range breakout initially, you wouldn't have gotten caught in the down move. Instead, you would have noticed that you've got an opening range reversal happening here, and now you can buy the dip. So that's what will happen when you understand how the opening range works. You'll be able to adapt to what the market gives you. But what I'm imploring you to do is not just adapt to every day, do whatever feels right. But instead, use bullish opening range strategies when the daily charts are looking bullish, bearish when they're bearish. All right? It'll make your trading life a lot easier. So let's look at how this worked from our trading 
uh, strategy point of view. So I put a few more lines on here uh, because it would help me visually go through this uh, quicker for you. So here's your th our 30 minute opening range um, level, high and low. And when we get an opening range breakout here, here's my fudge factor, the thin line. And here's where my stop would be, all right? An ATR measure away. And here's my ATR measure for the automated profit target. So the way my day looks here is I'm a buyer over the, the fudge factor. My stop would be down here. I take profits at this level and at this level if it gets there and I go to no loss as soon as I hit my profit target and wait it out till the end of the day. All right. So I sell some at the line. I sell some here. Pretty straightforward. The next day, the market's still in bullish mode. I get an opening range breakout here. My profit target is here. I don't make it there. Uh, honestly, we sell the lab. Uh, we get out with five minutes to go, so probably wouldn't have hit the stop. Probably would have been getting out around here. So I don't even hit my target, but it works out okay. Now it's clearly in a bullish mode. The, the third day here, I get an opening range reversal pattern here. My stop is down here. My initial target would be right here. Or if I missed the reversal, that happens to line up with the opening range breakout fudge factor. I'm a buyer there. Profit number one is here. Profit number two is right there. I happen to know that um, we did get profit uh, level two on that particular day. So that'll give you a sense of how we implement this. Our stops are always going to be uh, relatively the same. We'll, I mean, we teach traders how to adjust them according to market conditions, but the, the initial stop is set by an ATR measure, the initial profit target by an ATR measure. It makes trading really simple and incredibly effective as well. All right, I don't have to do a lot of decision making, and that means it's easy to execute. So here's another example where the um, and these these are trades that we took. I took these trades out of our trading room. I didn't just pull up the charts and look for something that looked good. So CBI um, on this day that I'm pointing to is the day that we're a trader. And the reason is because we've got this, get the drawing. We've got a daily chart that looks like, whoops, it looks like it might break out. Right now, obviously I don't know if it's gonna break out, but if the opening range breaks out, I want to follow it. Okay? So on this particular day, it's potential. Also could potentially do an opening range reversal or a gap down. Now, honestly, I would not be the buyer of the gap down because it hadn't broken out, but you could. And then on this day, it's a follow through day. So here is your five minute opening range and your 30 minute opening range. So this is the day that I pointed out, which was the first day that I said, if it gapped down, I wouldn't be a buyer and I wouldn't have been. So, and that's just because the breakout level was up here closer to 67.50 and um, I don't necessarily know it's gonna come back up through there. Now the breakout, however, taking out the prior day's high, taking out our fudge factor right here would be a good entry. If we took that, we probably never would, we wouldn't have hit our target, but it wouldn't have lost money either. The next day, you've already broken out. This is a day you absolutely want to be looking for a five minute breakout above the prior high. Actually, the prior day you would have looked for that too, but you didn't get it. In this case, you do get it, and here's your fudge factor. 
the blue line. Here is my stop. So I get to have the whole day's range in my trade. That's the kind of stop that I like. And here's my initial target. Second target isn't on here because we didn't reach it. Uh, so the way our approach would be, you're in here, take some profits here, move to no loss at that point, and ride it towards the end of the day. Now, if you're a swing trader, you're in, you take out some, and you let the rest run for the next several days with the trailing stop. That's the difference. All right, so I wanted to um, just point out the Dow. So here, this is the Dow recently. When the Dow was um, coming, uh, pulling back, um, and it just seemed like every day it couldn't do anything but go lower. And this is what it looks like when you look at it from an opening range reversal point of view. So the, the trend here is down. I don't want to be a buyer over the opening range because the daily trend is negative. Yes, could have gotten um, sucked into a short trade down here for sure with a stop, could have gotten stopped out all the way up here. Um, I have to look at the ATR to see if I'd actually wait that long. Looks like I might. Um, but then you've got a really nice opening range reversal that kicks in at the end of the day. All right, now this is a great looking trade. If, if this market um, rolls over and continues to move lower, this is the kind of trades you want to look out for, the market that kind of takes out the opening range, can't make any real progress, and at the end of the day breaks down into the opening range. And You can see you got a really nice sell-off. So even if I got short down here, stopped out up here, there's a good signal for opening range reversal with a stop up above the high of the day that would have made everything back. Then the next day, am I going to look to buy the opening range reversal down here? No. It didn't trade long enough under the opening range or far enough to get sucked into the short there. Am I going to buy the opening range reversal? No, because the trend is down. Am I going to look for an opening range reversal to short up here? Absolutely. This is a great looking one. How does it does this have does it look like a breakout that you've taken? It breaks out, you think you got it, maybe you don't, maybe you do, maybe you do, sitting around and then all of a sudden it falls apart, all right? Well, now I'm telling you how you look out for that and actually look for it to trade it. It breaks out, doesn't make any progress, you're a seller when it comes back into the opening range and you've got a target, all it has to do is hit the low of the day and it's a profitable trade. Same thing here. Again, my point here is the trend of the Dow was down. Every day it tried to make some progress over that 30-minute opening range. It just couldn't. All right. Look at the markets in this context, and you will change the way you see the markets. All right. So the way that you make this even better is that you understand the opening range needs to be traded with the right pattern at the right time. Right. Look at the opening range in terms of your tools for identifying whether you should look for a reversal or a breakout. And the other thing that you can use the opening range for, even if you're not trading it, you use it to measure whether or not the market is in a trending day or a choppy day. So watch the markets. We look at the major equity ETFs, SPIs, Qs. E, uh, IWMs and the diamonds and we look for all four of those to be very clear in the direction that they're trading vis-a-vis -vis their opening range and if you have a situation like that then you know you've got a bullish day if it's not clear then it's going to be a choppy day same thing for the downside so even using this information that way can be incredibly powerful and yes, you can use this with ETFs, you can use it with E-minis, you can use it with futures. The thing you want, though, is you need to understand your market's personality. You really want to figure out the fudge factors. You want to figure out your average true range or your measure of volatility and how to set your stops that way. And you want to make sure that you adhere to some of those rules that I, that I laid out for you in terms of the 10-day uh, 
moving average and the fudge factors to determine whether or not the, the points have actually been broken and you'll dramatically improve your odds. Now, <clears throat> these are some of the things that we do for you and teach you in our courses. So if you would like to take some of this further, um, we've got a course and really I put together a package because of this Metastock um, situation. I wanted to do something special for Metastock uh, members. So I've got uh, quite an unusual package here which revolves around this AM Trader training modules that we have. So the AM Trader is a, a, a streaming a video course that has three modules and all you have to do is log into our site and you'll be able to get it so we don't have to send you CDs as soon as you register you can get started and it it will teach you everything you need to know in terms of entries exits um, fudge factors and um, stops and uh, targets in terms of figuring them out as well as patterns that you want to look for so that you know which days you want to look for long trades and which days you want to look for short trades. The first module will tell you everything you need to know about the opening range from a theory point of view. The second module will tell you all the nuances and the patterns. That's the word I was looking for, the, the reversal patterns that we look for so you know which uh, OR reversal to buy, not just any one that comes back into the opening range. And also focus on the breakouts. Now, in addition to having the streaming video, each of these uh, modules is attached to additional information, such as archived videos that um, enhance the kind of classroom experience. And this is because, as you'll see, AM Trader includes um, a service that continues to put out videos to keep you educated. The other thing that we'll do is we link the particular modules to real-time scans that are scanning for stocks that would be good candidates for the reversal or the breakout. And so as a, as a bonus to uh, subscribing to the AM Trader course, which is your education, once you sign up for that, you have it for life. Bonus one would be that we'll give you 30 days of access to our mastery program. And the mastery program centers around a day trading room. And in that day trading room, our lead trader actually has a model portfolio. And he tells you exactly when he's getting in, exactly when he's getting out, and why. What his targets are, when he's moving it, it's like sitting there with a trader telling you exactly what he's doing. In addition, Twice a week, you'll get two videos. These are the videos that also get linked to the course, some of them. And these videos do two things. One video is a topic that's relevant to the current market conditions and nuances of trading the opening range. And the next video is what we call the trade plan video, where the day before um, the trading, which is now Wednesday night, I put together a video. I picked two to four stocks. And I say, this is how I'm going to trade these, these two to four stocks tomorrow. Where am I going to look for reversals? Where am I going to look for breakouts? Why do I want to be short? Why do I want to be long? It's my plan for the day. It outlines exactly how to approach a stock even before the market opens. In addition, every day you get a list of stocks. We scan the markets both with technology and by hand to find a list of stocks that we call the focus list that we're going to focus on to trade the next day. So we're not scrambling every morning, scanning the markets for what's hot. We've got a list that are set up for bullish trades and set up for bearish trades. That gets emailed to you as well as posted to the site as well as put into hot scans, which you'll also have access to that helps you scan those stocks. It's not a lot. It's anywhere from, I'd say, 8 to 20 stocks in any given day. Every month, we also have a live webinar where you can ask questions and we go over topics that um, are relevant to the market conditions to be able to get you uh, up to speed 
as quickly as possible as an opening range trader. So that whole day trading mastery program is usually $197 a month. If we were to sell it in parts, we could sell it for over $800 a month. Um, but we'll give you that free as a bonus for the first 30 days. Um, the second bonus is we went through hundreds and hundreds of videos that, as I said, are putting out two a week and put, get, put together a group of 25, kind of a best of. And they'll focus on teaching you setups and, and sharing some additional indicators and really give you more depth in terms of how to use the opening range. And so there's a $200 uh, value that you'll get as a bonus just for signing up now. And finally, the last bonus is a whole course that we did dedicated to mastering entries and exits. And this has everything to do with looking at price, volume, and time around key reference points, i.e. opening range breakouts and reversals, prior day high and low, to know whether or not the price has been broken and you should take it as a breakout or look for a reversal so that you can avoid the head fakes. It's like a PhD on time, price, and volume confirmation um, from a trading perspective. It was an entire course that we sold for $497, and as part of this Metastock package, we're going to include it as a bonus. So all this together, $1994 if you do, look at the value of it, but through this link, www.marketgage.com forward slash AM trader, you can get it all for four ninety seven, or two easy payments of two ninety seven if you prefer to pay in installments. Now we'll also give you uh, thirty days money back guarantee. If for any reason this isn't for you, just let us know, and um, we'll give you your money back. And we're happy that you tried it. Now this, we are going to have this for a, uh, a limited time. We did put this together uh, specifically for this Meta stock presentation and uh, all you've got to do is go to www.marketgage.com forward slash am trader and you'll that's where you'll find this package now you may uh, also recall from the beginning of the presentation I said you can get a free book as well that's the opening range handbook see if I can type that in and the where the place that you'll get that is marketcage.com forward slash metastock okay so if you go to www.marketgage.com forward slash metastock that's where you can get your free book and if you are a metastock member You'll also get indicators that will give you the opening ranges that you saw on my charts, as well as um, floor trader pivots, as well as the ATR indicator that you saw on that chart, and the previous day's high and low. So when you become a member of the AM Trader package, you're going to see that we do a lot with these key reference points of the prior day high and low and the floor trader pivots to make trading the opening range um, incredibly um, simple and effective and profitable. And so with that, I'd like to thank everybody for uh, attending. And if you've got any questions, I am here to answer any of the questions that uh, you may have. Okay, well, I'd like to uh, thank you for coming in today, Jeff. It was really good That's to have you. Up. Sorry, we had a couple of technical issues there in the middle. But um, great session.